I've been staying at a friend's place for a bit and I wanted to cook a meal to thank them for their hospitality. They had a bag of shrimp in the freezer, so I decided to make a delicious shrimp stir fry with some ingredients they had in their kitchen cabinets and the fridge. You can make this recipe if you have some common kitchen staples such as bell peppers, soy sauce, onions, pasta, and flour. For this recipe, you'll need the following ingredients. Soy sauce, low sodium is preferred. It's optional, but rice vinegar for the sauce, cornstarch or flour to thicken the sauce. You'll also need a bag of extra large or jumbo shrimp. These are peeled and de-veined. If you need to defrost the bag of shrimp, you can place it in a bowl in the fridge overnight. If you don't have the time or you forgot to defrost them, place the shrimp in a bowl and run it under lukewarm water for about three minutes. I'll show you here. Let's get started. The shrimp are still a bit frozen, so I'll rinse them in some water. You can do this a few times, um, as many times as you need to. So I'll spray the shrimp with some water, lukewarm, and make sure to saturate them thoroughly. It can help if you massage the shrimp into the water to help them to defrost. And then drain the water and repeat as many times as needed. You can run them under water for a good three minutes or so, or let them soak and massage them as I did previously. Dump the water out and repeat that last step if you still feel like the shrimp are a bit frozen. Huge they are. Look at how huge they are, almost the size of my finger. You can leave the shrimp tails on, but I prefer to remove them to enhance the dining experience. I'd like for my guests to be able to chew their food without having to worry about spitting the tails out. Though if I were making a soup, I would probably leave the tails on to enhance the flavor of the soup. But not today, since we're just making stir fry. If you like the use of the audio instead of the captions in the lower third, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Here you can see me dig my nails into the center of the tail and split it to get it to be removed very easily. This will take some time, but I think it's completely worth it. And sometimes you may have to wiggle the tail off to get it to slide out easily. We're almost done with them. Looks like we're almost done with them. I'll check the bowl to make sure I didn't miss any. It looks like we got them all. Let's place the shrimp back in the fridge while we repair our veggies. I found a green, orange, and yellow bell pepper to use. Cut them up into about inch long strips. Stir fry can be made with a variety of veggies. If you have any of the following, you can add them to your dish. Broccoli florets, baby corn, sugar snap peas, carrot slice lengthwise, or water chestnuts, You can even buy a bag of frozen or freshly sliced stir-fry vegetables from your local grocery store.
Once you're done slicing your vegetables, place them in a bowl to the side. As you can see, there are many ways to slice a bell pepper. Choose the method that you find the easiest. I usually like to cut off the stem and remove the seeds and then begin slicing the rest of the bell pepper. Don't worry about slicing them to look uniform. They don't need to be perfect, just focus on getting them done. done with the orange one, now we'll do the yellow. Make sure you're using a sharp knife and not a dull knife. A dull knife will lead you to use more force to cut the item or to slice the item that you're cutting and cause you to accidentally cut yourself. Now we'll do the same with the red onion. Normally I would use a yellow or sweet onion, but we're making do with what we have. I'm not sure why they call them red when they clearly look purple. So it turns out red onions, similar to red cabbage, have been given the name red, or the title red, because they were used as dyes and they created a reddish tint. But also, it was a category for a variety of colors under that red category, such as why red hair actually looks more orange, red cabbage looks more purple, and so on and so forth. There's also a third reason. Sometimes they did appear red. You know, fruits and vegetables sometimes gain their colors from the pH balance in the soil and other factors that can change their hue colors, such as carrots being pale yellow, purple, and orange. The more you know. Now that we've cut up all our vegetables, I'm gonna go ahead and cook the shrimp. So we're gonna grab our wok. You can use a deep saucepan if you have, but a wok would be best. Grab a wok and use the oil of your choice. Normally I would use vegetable oil, but I'm going to be using an extra virgin olive oil spray that we have here. It's fine since both Vegetable oil and olive oil have a sm high smoke point. You could also use avocado oil if you wanted to. Wait for the oil to heat up and then start adding your shrimp. Mm, hear that soup. Shrimp doesn't usually take that long to cook, usually about two to three minutes. Make sure you're stirring it often. The shrimp currently has a gray tint to it, but once it's fully cooked, it'll look more pink. As you can see, it's already starting to have a bit of a pink color to it. There you go. The shrimp is almost all pink and it's even curled. Time. Even though we're using extra large shrimp, they, when they're being cooked, they tend to shrink some. All right, we're gonna go ahead and place our shrimp in a bowl and place that to the side. I'll leave the shrimp juice in the wok. We'll use that to cook our vegetables. 
Now we'll go ahead and make the sauce. If you have cornstarch, that would be best. But if not, you can double up on the flour. So if you're using half a teaspoon for cornstarch, you can go ahead and use one whole teaspoon of flour. We're going to go ahead and add our soy sauce. Don't forget to add the water. And then we'll add rice vinegar to give it a good kick. Because we've added flour, we're going to use a whisk to make sure we get rid of any lumps and to make sure it's mixed thoroughly. This may take a while. If you need to, you can pause and check to make sure there aren't any flour lumps in your mixture. And if there are, just keep whisking. Looks like we're done with the sauce. Now we're going to cook our vegetables. Going back to the wok, we're going to add our vegetables in and cook them in the sauce that, in the juice, in the shrimp juice that was left behind. And we're going to use our large spoon to break apart any sliced chunks that haven't been separated. You can see some of the onions still to be separated, so go ahead and use your spoon to break them apart. I'm also removing any of the center chunks from the onion. Keep stirring the vegetables occasionally. Then you want to add in the sauce mixture that you created. Stir the vegetables and make sure they're evenly set, coated with the sauce. Give it some time and the sauce will start to thicken. If you feel like you need more, you can create another mixture using the same ingredients as before. The cornstarch, the soy sauce, the rice vinegar. As you can see, the mixture is already getting thick. While we're waiting for that to cook, we'll go ahead and make some pasta. So here we have a large saucepan. I'm going to go ahead and cook some spaghetti I found. First we'll add water, and then we'll wait for the water to start to boil. Don't forget to add a bit of salt. Now that the water is boiling, go ahead and add your spaghetti. Go 
ahead and add an extra half filled box. And we'll wait for that to fill. Pasta usually takes around 10 to 12 minutes depending on how al dente you want it to taste. That basically means how hard or how soft you want it to be. I prefer 12 minutes. I like it on the softer side. See, the pasta is almost done. The noodles are flexible. Let's go ahead and give it a quick taste test to see how it cooks there. It tastes pretty good. I'll give it after the pasta is done. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the water from the pan and run it under some cold water and drain that. Then we're gonna put it to the side. As you can see, our vegetables are almost done, the sauce is nice and thick. We'll go ahead and add our shrimp back in. Make sure to stir it and thoroughly coat the shrimp and the vegetables in the sauce. it in the kitchen I would have sprinkled in some ginger powder to our sauce mix just to give it a nice kick and maybe even some extra spicy chili powder well, it looks like we're almost done with our stir fry here some of the sauce. The shrimp are nice and large and there's plenty to go around. I did find some crushed red peppers to add so I'm going to sprinkle in some and see how that tastes. Let's stir it up. Here's our taste test. Mmm, that's pretty good. Now let's get some of the vegetables. Mm, it's nice and flavorful. Can't go wrong with a simple stir-fry recipe. If you made any substitutions, let me know. Leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.